Welcome to the Amadeus Software Tips and Techniques podcast series. My name is Ian Amarinaika and I work for Amadeus Software Limited, experts in SaaS and providers of business intelligence solutions, technical support and instructor-led and online training. Please feel free to visit our website www.amadeus.co.uk to find out more information on this podcast series as well as the other services we provide. In the following presentation, we are going to explore how we can use the SAS file statement to improve efficiency within our SAS programs. SAS file statement provides us with an alternative approach to reading data into the SAS system. It enables us to read an entire SAS dataset into memory in a single step as opposed to sequentially reading data one record at a time. It achieves this by firstly allocating sufficient space in memory such that the whole file can be read in one operation. Once data has been read in, it is then retained until it is either released by another SAS file statement or by terminating the SAS session. In order to understand why we need to use this, we first need to appreciate how SAS traditionally reads in data. A typical SAS program tends to access data from a library using a combination of data steps or procedures. Well, procedures tend to work by reading and processing pages of data as organized within our data sets. In comparison to this, the data step reads in each row of data sequentially with each read operation, commonly being known as an input output or IO request. This is where SAS accesses data held on disk and reads it into memory. Data is then typically processed within our data steps and we usually write them out to a new data set prior to being released from memory. Well, this process is an iterative process. It is repeated for each row of data working through the data set one record at a time. And clearly the number of observations in our data set will actually dictate the number of input output requests processed, which will have an impact on processing time. In addition to this, subsequent steps that do require the same data will actually need to repeat the same operation again, which will result in multiple data reads from disk. So how does the SAS file statement help in this case? Well, the first key benefit is really the capability to load all of the data into memory before any programming steps actually execute. By the time our data step starts to execute, data is immediately available to process, which will reduce the number of individual input output operations. We can also now control when the data should be released from memory, which means that subsequent steps that now need to access the same data can do so again without the need to read from disk. This is clearly beneficial in situations where more than one step needs access to the same data. All of this can lead to improved performance and faster processing times when working with large volumes of data. Let's take a look at the syntax now. The SAS file statement is a global statement which actually starts with the keyword SAS file and is then followed by the name of the dataset that we wish to process, which can be specified as a one or two level name as appropriate. The member type will actually default to data, which is currently the only file type supported, and the statement itself is actually limited to processing datasets created from version 7 onwards. If the dataset is password protected, the appropriate read, write, alter or PW password can then be specified. The option to open the dataset allocates the appropriate amount of memory to store the dataset, but defers the actual reading of the data to a later point. Selecting to load the data will actually open and read the data into memory, and of course closing the data frees up the memory and closes the dataset. The following example demonstrates the use of this statement, firstly in loading the data that we wish to summarize, This then enables our summary procedure to process the data which is now already available in memory, which should result in a reduced input output time. Once the procedure finishes executing, data is retained in memory, enabling the subsequent data step to access it. The final step in the process is just to release the data from memory using the close option.
If we take a look at the log file generated, we can see that the real time taken to access and process this data once it is available in memory is relatively small. If we compare this against the amount of time taken to retrieve the data repeatedly from disk, we can see there are performance benefits to be gained from this approach. Now that we've seen how to use the statement, let's explore some of the considerations around how to actually implement it. Well firstly, in order to open or load data, the SAS file statement needs to have exclusive access to the data set, which means that data should not already be locked by another process. Once the data has been loaded, it is then available for input and update processing only. Well, this means that data can be read, variable values modified, rows of data can be appended or deleted, but it is not possible to replace the data set either through sorting the data and writing the results back, or by overwriting it via a data or proc step, or even to restructure it by using something like proc data sets to rename or relabel columns. There are also considerations around the amount of memory available. If there is insufficient real memory to read a data set, then the operating system typically compensates by using virtual memory, which can result in little to no performance improvement. It's also worth considering that both SAS and the host operating system will have a limit on the maximum amount of available memory, which if you exceed it, may result in more I.O. operations and actually slower performance. The amount of memory required to read in a dataset can actually be found by examining the header or descriptor portion of a dataset. Uh, SAS files are organised into pages of data, and the page size and the number of pages can be accessed from the dataset properties or just through a proc contents output. This can actually be beneficial when assessing whether or not to use the SAS file statement. Our recommendation is always to benchmark the use of this statement in order to establish if performance is likely to improve within your programs. Well that concludes this presentation. Thank you for taking the time to watch this Amadeus Software podcast. We hope you found it useful. Please make sure to check out the rest of this podcast series via our website, through iTunes and on YouTube. We also welcome any comments or suggestions you may have for future tips please feel free to contact us via either our email at info at amadeus.co.uk, by telephone or by visiting our website at www.amadeus.co.uk.